Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a Vespa GTS 300 and specifically a 2020 and later HPE equipped model. So in order to make this a little easier, I did remove the muffler. You can watch my prior video on removing the muffler. I'd recommend doing that if it's your first time. Uh, here in our workshop, we never really remove the mufflers. We have a pretty good access. Uh, for the camera, I want to have good visibility of the oil drain, the oil filter, and the oil fill. On an HPE equipped motor, it's all going to be located on the right side of the engine. So there's your water pump right here. It's all on this right side. So let's get right to it. I'm going to show you the materials you need and then next the tools that you need to successfully change the oil on your GTS. So first of all, you're going to need oil. Here in my workshop, I have oil in large 55 gallon drums with a special calibrated pump that adds the oil to the engine. While doing it in your own home workshop, I'd recommend buying two bottles of oil, whether it's two quarts or two liters of oil. We have several different brands available on our web store, scooterwest.com. Uh, it just needs to be a full synthetic 5W40, um, specifically that meets the JASO um, MA or MA2 standard. That's just what Vespa specifies, full synthetic. And part number on this is oil 5W40SA. Uh, the most popular oil for these scooters is the Castrol oil. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, any Egypt used to be the original equipment manufacturer or supplier of the oil for the Vespa scooters. Uh, now it's Castrol, but both of them are very high quality products. We also carry oil by Multal that works just as well. Several of my past videos have covered different uh, grades of oil, but you could beat the oil, you know, talking about oil, you know, you can beat the horse till it's dead. Uh, I don't want to talk about oil. That's pretty much the standard you're going to need, full synthetic. Uh, you're going to need an oil filter and an O-ring for your oil drain. So the O-ring is 285536. Definitely recommend having an O-ring on hand. You may be able to reuse your old one. Several different brands of oil filters. I always recommend either a factory oil filter. Uh, we have the one with the nut typically available. Right now, we're currently out of stock of them. Uh, but the high flow makes a very, very high quality filter. I've done a teardown of the oil filters to show the various qualities. So essentially the Melosi oil filter is the same grade as the high flow filter. It's got a nice square O-ring right here and they pre-lubricate the, the ceiling ring. Uh, part number on this is 82535-PA. Um, you search oil filter on Scooter West and find all the other ones. Um, but there's your basic oil filter O-ring. So let's get on to some of the specialty tools needed to do an oil change. It's not quite as simple as doing a car oil change. First of all, you can see the oil is just going to drain on your center stand, which is never all that fun. Um, I sure hope you've been checking your oil on your Vespa GTS. It's not exactly easy. Uh, without the skirt here, I get easy access to the dipstick. So that kind of start by taking that out. And usually I always check the oil. You want to check it when it's cool. Uh, Piaggio recommends allowing the engine to cool down for 10 minutes and then park it on your center stand before you check the oil. And when you check the oil, you thread this dipstick all the way in and pull it out, you know, wipe it before and then you check the level. And typically I'd report to a customer if their oil was low prior to an oil change. Um, alternatively, I can measure the oil that comes out of the engine as well. Uh, so I'll just leave the dipstick out. Don't want to start the motor ever with the dipstick out. It will make a very serious mess. It's not very fun to clean up. Um, the next step, you can either get a lift, like something like this. You can get a scissor jack that I've covered in other videos to lift the center of the scooter. But ideally, you want to take it off the center stand when you do an oil change. Fortunately, these newer Vespa GTSs have a nice stable side stand. Um, in the interest of make, making this easy for doing the video, I'm just going to clamp the front tire, but I'm going to take the scooter off the, the center stand and, um, and then we'll be able to start draining the oil. All right, so you can uh, use a nice handy scooter specific oil pan. We have these available on the Scooter West web store, tool, oil pan, pretty simple to type into Scooter West search. Um, 
has like a good capacity, about three quarts, so it's perfectly adequate for um, oil change. So first of all, you wanna get the oil filter out of the way. Best way to do that, you don't really care about the old oil filter, just take a good old channel locks. Um, you could use the tool that removes, you know, installed the oil filter originally, but I just typically like using channel locks. Just go to town like that. And once you get started, it'll spin right off. Go ahead and allow that to drain a little bit. Now you can get easy access to your drain plug. You can either use a 24 millimeter combination wrench, careful not to skin your knuckles if you're doing it from underneath here, or you could use a large 24 millimeter socket. And this is a specific uh, style socket that's really shallow, makes it really easy to do when the muffler's in place, but here you can see you have nice easy access to the oil drain. If you're gonna do it with the muffler in place, I'd just recommend having a 24 millimeter combination wrench. So you wanna take care not to uh, skin your knuckles, find a good position. You know, with a wrench like this, make sure it's all the way on the wrench and then just push, you know, crack it free. And again, if you have to really strain to get that off, it was over tightened the last time it was installed. Doesn't need to be all that tight, just sealing a gasket is all it's doing. Um, pretty much pull this out. The engine is slightly warm. That's a good thing. You always want to drain your oil when with an, a warm engine. And if you look right in this cap, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the O-ring right now. So go ahead and scoop that O-ring out, leave those parts out. And with those same channel locks, I'll go ahead and pull the strainer out. The other thing you want to do is leave the uh, dipstick loose because it drains a little bit faster sometimes with the dipstick loose. And you can see there's a little bit of gasket debris on there. That's pretty normal. Um, kind of just look at the filter. Typically you don't need to clean these out, uh, but it looks very clean. Just a small bit, bit of gasket debris. I'll just wipe this off. You could use a solvent to, to spray it out. Just make sure it's not, you know, if there's a, a, a couple of small metal fragments, don't be alarmed. If there's a lot of metal fragments and your motor knocks, well then I would be alarmed, you know, maybe run the engine a little bit too low on oil and you might have a, um, the precursors to a rod knock or a cam failure. So it's always a good idea to look at your uh, strainers and that could tell you a lot about how the engine is. Obviously not really ever an issue if you never run the oil low or allow it to uh, degrade. I'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll get some clean rags. Uh, just allow that to drain. You can even tip the scooter to the right to drain just a little bit more out if you like. I just use these disposable rags. This is a perfect way to clean all these parts. Um, they don't leave really any residue behind like a cloth rag. So clean that part, you know, clean the, the drain plug, you know, mainly the gasket surface, not really critical if you clean the outside of it. Could clean it in a solvent tank if you like. Uh, now it's down to just a little trickle, just dripping out. So go ahead and put the strainer back in and it's got an O-ring in there that will seat. You feel it just go right in there. And I checked that strainer, make sure there's no tears in it. That O-ring was in good shape, uh, pretty important. Next, you wanna take an O-ring, a brand new one preferably. Go ahead and set that into the well of the oil drain. And right now it's just sticking in there with a small bit of oil. You could also put grease on it. Um, we'll go ahead and thread that in place, but make sure the O-ring does stay in place because if it skips out of, out of the, um, that groove there, you're gonna end up with a leak. So take your uh, combination wrench, and I'll show you how tight this needs to be. So it's all the way seated right now. All you wanna do is just go a little bit. I'm just putting my palm on there and that's all you need to go. It doesn't need to, you don't need to crank on it. Just cause it's a big 24 millimeter wrench, you don't need to go to town on it. You know, it's not, it's not the wheel axle that needs to be torqued about 80, 85 foot pounds. Um, but it's not a critical torque. It just doesn't need to be over tightened. So I kind of like wipe in, make sure there's obviously no gasket behind. It's just metal. Everything looks perfectly good. Um, a cheaper oil filter, this O-ring is not going to be oiled. So I take brand new oil and wipe that uh, oil you know, on there. So the way you do an oil filter, go ahead and just hand tighten it. 
you know, where the gasket's seated. Still dripping a little bit of oil from the bottom, just kind of wipe up everything. Take the T-handle, this is a uh, Tool-OF, it's the classic T-handle for the original style Vespa filters, a couple other variations, whether it's a nut um, or the original one. So is what I like to do is turn about a whole third turn more. And that's, you know, again, you don't need to go to town on this. I can still tighten it more, but it just right now it's, it's more than hand tight, but definitely um, not cranked to the very end. So, you know, definitely want to make sure it's, you know, pretty snug with just one hand on there and the O-ring. You do not want to tighten it until the O-ring is all the way crushed and your the metal filter is touching the, um, the engine case. So kind of a fine balance of how tight you want to uh, get that filter. You know, too loose is obviously a dangerous situation because the O-ring may expand and swell or, or shrink as it ages, then the filter could potentially come loose. So go ahead and dispose of your old oil correctly. Nice thing about this pan is it does have this spout so you could easily pour it into another container. So next we're gonna go ahead and fill the engine oil. Uh, at least put one quart in it just to get it started, uh, warm up a little bit, allow the oil filter to fill up and uh, get the passages all clear. We'll put it back on the center stand and obviously the muffler's gotta go back on it. Uh, the dipstick, as you can see, a standard oil can, like the, the cheaper castor oil, you're never gonna be able to successfully pour all the oil back in here. If you buy the higher end oils, such as the Multol or the, the Any Oil, they do have a nice handy spout that kind of does taper down to a much smaller size. So it is possible to pour the oil in with this, you know, much easier than a big spout, but it's gonna take you a while. Uh, if you really want to set yourself up for success and you plan on doing more oil changes, two ways to go about it. You can get one of these big, silly, huge syringes uh, that we have in a workshop. Or if you're a large workshop, you can have a $1,000 uh, calibrated pump that will pump it in. But ideally, in your home workshop, the best thing you can do is set up a funnel that works with this. So this is the tool funnel on the Scooter West website. It's a Redline oil funnel. That's real popular with the motorcycle uh, oil fills. Well, most motorcycles have like a fill that's more at a 45 degree angle. Um, Vespa was very wise and has the oil fill pointing up um, at the 12 o'clock position. Well, pretty easy to modify this funnel so you can easily use it for future oil changes or top offs. So, so ideally you wanna bend this so it works on that 12 o'clock position filler. Um, a couple of ways you can do it, you carefully do it with a torch or you can use a heat gun. A hair dryer is never gonna quite get hot enough. You can find something like this at um, Home Improvement Store, Auto Parts Store, Harbor Freight here in North America, probably like 10 bucks. So heat this up. You know, it's just a basic thermal plastic. The only reason I have this, the socket or any type of round thing is just I don't want to deform the shape of this. So kind of just doing a little craft project in, as an intermission of doing an oil change here. And again, if you're just doing a one-time oil change, get the higher quality oil with the nicer oil spout and you'll, you'll be able to carefully pour, you know, 98% of that oil from that bottle into the um, oil fill without dribbling it. So yeah, once it starts getting hot, you'll see it will start getting flexy. You may also want to have cold water because once you get a uh, thermoplastic hot, it kind of stays real flexible for a while. And if you have cold water on it, it's going to, um, you know, hold its uh, new position much easier. So yeah, I can see it just starting to get kind of glossy. So I know it's starting to uh, soften up all the way around. And I think I've covered this even in a past video when I did an oil, oil change or I topped off a, a HPE. And just pretty much just like that. And it's got a little de deform on there. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, blow it or you could just, um, like I said, put a little cold water on there and it will just hold its shape. At this point, now I have a funnel that's perfectly set up for an HPE scooter. 
and we'll just go ahead and start pouring the oil in. We're gonna pour a whole entire liter or quart into the engine. Uh, the top off, depending on how much you drained out, it could range from another 100 cc's to 300 cc's of top off oil. Uh, typically you wanna run the engine for a few moments until the oil uh, pressure light that's up on your dash extinguishes and not warm it all the way up because that will change the, um, the level, you know, the reading level of your oil. And even with the funnel like that, you could just kind of thread that in there and let it sit and drain the last, you know, the last few drops out of the oil bottle if you like. So now we got the scooter back up on the center stance on a level surface, whether it's like a concrete floor in a garage or something. Um, got one liter of oil in it. You can go ahead and turn the, the engine on. Ideally, you want to look at your oil pressure light, but I've listened to these motors. I can kind of listen when the tone changes inside the motor. That's when the oil has hit the main uh, bearings and it quiets up a little bit. So I know that's the point where I can stop the motor and the oil circulating, so. And it only takes like, you know, five, 10 seconds I'll run it. You don't even wanna run it enough to warm up the oil, so. And then allow it to settle. Um, like I said, if it's a warm motor, uh, the oil will expand quite a bit, but I have pretty cool oil in there, but I'm gonna let it settle for uh, maybe a minute. We can go ahead and pull the dipstick out and go ahead and wipe that free, clean it all up. So you got a clean dipstick and now we'll carefully get it back into the um, oil fill. And one thing, be very careful, we've sold quite a few of these dipsticks. They are pretty fragile and long, so if you uh, bend it too much, you could break a chunk of the dipstick off in um, the cavity where the flywheel and the alternator or the stator is for the, the scooter. So I thread it all the way in, almost seated it, now I'm gonna pull it out. And like I said, I only have about one quart in there. It's just above the low mark. And the amount of oil to bring it from the low mark to the top mark is about 250 cc's of oil or approximately a quarter quart or a quarter liter of oil. So um, just from looking at that, I'll just go ahead and put a quarter quart. The nice thing about the nicer oils, they do have graduation uh, marks, so I'll just, uh, bring it from the top down to the 0.75 liter mark for the second bottle here and will be perfectly topped off with the correct amount of oil. And go ahead and pour and then double check. And actually I'll, I'll do a tiny bit less than a quarter, quarter liter. So just like that, let it drain through. And once it drips into the, kind of settles into the thing, because if, if you check the oil too soon after, sometimes there's residual oil on the outside of the components inside this cavity, and it'll give you a false reading. So check it just one more time. Alternatively, if you plan on keeping your GTS for quite a long time, I might recommend replacing the oil pan that has a sight glass in it, then you can easily visually check your oil at any time. So pretty much it's right there at the full mark, exactly at the full mark. So I got it perfect right there. And now you have the remainder of the bottle to top off the engine oil as needed. And just talking about the top off and checking the oil, if you look in the owner's manual of your Vespa GTS, they say, check your oil every ride. Um, I feel that's a little excessive but you definitely wanna be checking it in between your oil change uh, intervals and get an idea. Once you have a scooter, you might realize the type of riding you do, it may not burn any oil in between oil change intervals. I'd recommend on these 300s, if you're running them on the highway uh, or running them in lots of heavy stop and go, I'd recommend just changing the oil every 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles. The normal interval for these is about 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers, which is pretty far. I mean, the synthetic oil will hold together, but they do just take just a tad over a liter. It's not much oil running these motors. They're definitely gonna last a lot longer if you cut your oil change intervals in half. So just keep that in mind. But uh, back to checking your oil. My recommendation is just check it every uh, 250 miles, you know, which is every 
I would say every other gas stop. And then you get an idea of your oil consumption. Maybe you only need to top off once every 1500 miles, or maybe you need to do a little top off after 250 or 500 miles because you're running it hard on the highway at constant high speed, you know, would be a situation where the, the motor would consume uh, a bit more oil than just normal operation. So just keep that in mind, uh, something to keep in thought. You never want to run these motors low. They're very expensive. Uh, the repair, typically you'll need at minimum a crankshaft and a new piston and cylinder for them. Um, but if you do regular oil changes, there's no reason at all why this motor won't last 50 or 75,000 miles with no issues, so. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope that wasn't too long for you, but I covered every detail that you could ever think about for doing an oil change on your Vespa GTS 300, or pretty much any other Vespa. It's all pretty much the same steps, same oil filter. If you go down to the 50 cc's, you're not gonna have an oil filter, you're just gonna have the strainer, but pretty much all the same components on the full four-stroke Vespa lineup even carries over to the Piaggio lineup as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you're looking for parts and accessories, oil filter, oil, uh, any of those tools I showed, consider visiting scooterwest.com and you'll find all those parts. And if you're looking for the part numbers, just look in the description of this video. I know that's kind of hard to find unless you're on a computer or a mobile phone. Um, if it's the first time you stumble across this video, consider subscribing and search for us on the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and keep on riding. See you on the next one.